Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'm gonna show you how I put together this DIY battery power bank, which I'm gonna use to power a bunch of sensors and Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. And I'm gonna show you how I set it up step by step. So let's go. All right, so for those of you following along with the CO2 algae scrubber project, you would probably be aware that I'm using quite a bit of equipment to try and record a lot of the data. Now, all of that equipment is sitting inside this enclosure unit, which you can go and check out in another video, which I created earlier. But one of the things I wanted to make sure is that if for some reason the power turns off, all of the equipment doesn't just shut down and then I have to go back and actually turn everything back on to make sure it's all working properly. So what I'm creating here is this battery backup system. Now, what I've done is gone onto eBay and purchased one of these power bank 18650 circuit chargers. Now, the reason that these chargers are required is because 18650 batteries need to charge in a certain way. If you just connect any type of battery charger to it, you'll most likely either cause damage to the charging unit or the batteries themselves. Now, these units are only a few dollars off eBay, free shipping, which is pretty cheap in my opinion. Now, they also come with not only the charging port, but also two outputs as well. Now, they're rated at 1 amp and 2.1 amp, which is perfect for the application that I'm using. So as you can see on the specifications for this unit, there's the input at 5 volts 1 amp, and the output is both a 5 volt 2.1 amp and a 5 volt 1 amp. So you can use both of those output ports at the same time, which is handy if, say, you want to run to two separate Arduinos or a one Arduino, one Raspberry Pi, whatever you want to do. Now we do have the charging display on the front there and like it says, it will only charge lithium ion 18650 batteries. This is due to the charging profile with voltages and current, etc. If you plug in some other type of battery into that charging unit, like I said, you'll have some issues. And the instructions to actually set it up, pretty straightforward. You've got a battery minus and battery plus, which you can see there. All you need to do is connect the battery leads to those two soldering points, and that's it. You just parallel connect all your batteries together uh, if you're going to have more than one, which you'll see later on in the video. So there's a few different ways of actually holding the batteries. I'm going to use this four battery holder unit, whatever they call it. You can find them actually pretty cheap on eBay. You just type in 18650 battery holder. Now, this one comes with wires actually connected to the positive and negative side. Now, you can get ones that are PCB solder mounted as well, but in this case, this is what's going to work for me. One thing to take into account is working out how much you actually want to charge or have charge capability because you may only want to use one battery or you may need to use four or eight depending on how big you actually need it. Now, just take into account how much current you're pulling out of that unit because you may need to purchase one of the bigger output units that take more current so you can actually hold more batteries. Just take into account that these units tend to be different voltages than just the 5 volt so you need to work out exactly how you're going to set your setup up at the start uh, so you don't run into problems later on. Now what I'm going to do is just quickly voltage test each of these batteries because they have been sitting around for a little bit. I want to make sure that they're all around the same voltage. Now if they're not, what I would suggest is actually charging all the batteries so that they're all fully charged. That way you'll have the same voltage. Now what I've done is created another video which I've uploaded already which shows how you can make one of those cheap uh, battery chargers for an 18650 battery. So go check that one out as well. Being that they're so close, the batteries will balance their voltage quite easily. If there was one battery that was right out, you may have some issues there as it'll try to charge the other battery or balance them and you may cause some issues with the battery itself. So I would suggest getting those voltages as close as possible. Now, always good to do a quick test fit before you start setting anything up or doing any work just to make sure it's all gonna suit. Now, now I know what I wanna do. All I have to do is start to solder together this circuit. Now, as you can see, I've got the four wires from the positive. Now, they are a bit longer at the moment. I do want to cut them down. Now, 
in this application, it's not really necessary that the wires are really minimized as much as possible. If there was more batteries and there was probably a bigger setup and more current, you know, you'd want to minimize the amount of cabling that you have as possible. Um, but in this case, you know, we could have just soldered them all together at the end and then connected them up to that positive lead. The reason being is that you don't want to create extra resistance in this circuit. Now, like I said before, in this scenario, it's not going to be too big of an issue, um, but if you were expanding to a bigger system, and I might discuss this in another video, but you would want to minimize your resistance so you didn't have issues with each of the cells trying to pull more or less current through them. So what I've done is I've just stripped down the cables to as small as I possibly can, and what I'm going to do is join them together. Once I've joined them together, I can then have one single lead, which is going to be a bit thicker so it can carry that current. And like I said, in this application, it's not really a big deal. But in some cases, if you are doing some of those other charging units, which were a bit bigger, you may want to take a bit more care in making sure that the leads are all the same length if you need to have leads that are a bit longer, etc. Now, just heat shrinking and also making sure that it's the same on the negative side. Then we just need to solder on the positive and negative onto those two terminals. And basically, that's as simple as it is. Now, once we're done, all we need to do is add the batteries into those units. Now, the batteries themselves, you want to make sure that the capacity is very close to each other. Now, I'm not going to go into a full explanation as to why. You just need to get it closer at the moment. I can go through that in potentially another video. Now, when purchasing 18650 batteries, you tend to get a rough indicator of what the capacity is. Now, it doesn't give you an exact, and they can vary within a percentage range. So a good thing to do is test the full capability of the battery using a battery charge and discharge like the Opus unit you can see here. Now, it will give you the capacity of each of those batteries and that's why I've handwritten on the battery what that capacity is. Now I'm just adding those four batteries in but first off you can see even just with one battery it does show there's 79% capacity in that battery already. Now that's because it goes off the voltage. Now once I put all four of them in we'll still have that same 79% but what I'm going to do is just show you here that the voltages are all around that 4.1% volts across all of the batteries. Now, if there was a big difference in between it, what you would see is that one battery would then start to be transferring across to the others and you would have that type of balancing occurring across the batteries. Not a big issue because they're all quite similar. As you can see, now that I've turned it back on, we're still at that 79%. Now, what I'm gonna do is plug it in to actually charge up those batteries which uses that micro USB. And as you can see, it's showing the flashing in, which means that it's actually charging those batteries. Now, if I tilt the camera right, we can actually see all of the things that can come up on the screen. So as you can see, it goes from 100% down to zero. We've got an in and out, and also those two USB ports, which are gonna to indicate to us if there's actually something being drawn from each of those ports. Now, as you can see here, here's a thermal imagery of not only the batteries, but also the charging unit. Now, the batteries aren't getting warm at all, but as you can see there, there's just the unit's normal temperature. And if I flip the unit over, you can see it's basically that one resistor up in the top corner. So that's its normal operation. No issues there with heat. Now, the only thing I need to really do is attach the unit to the board. So I've lined up where I roughly want it, and I'm gonna use some hot glue underneath the unit to actually attach it down to the board. Now, the reason I'm running those cable ties underneath, or that one cable tie, is to just have a bit of a tie on the actual batteries themselves, just so I can, in future, if I need to remove them to replace one, if for some reason one of them's faulty, but the cable tie essentially is holding them so they don't fall out in case, say, for example, the vibration from the air pump or something like that. So once I've just hot glued the connections so that it doesn't move around, basically it's all in place and attached. So now that I've got it all set up, I don't have to worry about power outages 
and the equipment having to be reset up or anything like that. I still do need to run all the wiring and all that, which I'll do in a future video. That's about it from me. Make sure you like and subscribe to see more videos like this and also see more on the Algae CO2 project. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.